and welcome back. In this series of lectures, we're going to teach you a new abstraction called MapReduce and an implementation of it in many languages, but in particular Python, called Spark. Very exciting. But first, what we're going to do is teach you this fundamental principle that actually we should have taught you a couple of lecture, lectures ago called Amdahl's Law. And actually, it's called Amdahl's Heartbreaking Law. And part of it is, as much as you try, you can't get past this law. So it's heartbreaking that you can't get above that. But let's even tell you what it is. So the model is the following. You have some enhancement. You want to upgrade your GPU, upgrade your memory, upgrade some part of your computer, upgrade some part of some system. It actually isn't even, this law applies to anything. It doesn't actually even limit it to computers. So the model is the following. You have some enhancement, let's call it E. And you want to measure how much your speed up is. Is it two times faster overall, overall, three, five, ten times faster, a hundred times faster based on this enhancement? And there's a very simple equation that we highlight how to calculate that. So the speed up with E is the execution time without E divided by the execution time with E. And you can imagine that, right? If the time is halved, then the speed up would be a factor of two. Imagine that, right? The time with the enhancement, oh my gosh, it's half time to do this thing. Oh, it's a new kind of shovel, Brrr, dig a hole. Okay, well, it's half the time that it used to take, so some time at the bottom, half the time on the top. If you figure that out, the time will be a half, and then that one half goes over here and the two flips it, becomes a factor of to speed up. That makes sense? 2x. So we don't, we often, we in fact, we encourage our 61C students and all students not to use a percentage speed up because people just get that math wrong. Oh, it's 150% speed up. No, you want to use 1.5x. It's just much easier to understand what that is. Okay. Let's understand how we came up with that. So let's think about the problem. The, every, every challenge you have, and this is particularly true with code that has maybe a part that can be parallelized, like in OpenMP, here's a parallel section and a part that isn't, a critical section or a part that's the serial part, maybe the setup part and the gather part at the end, the join part. There's the forking, the join, but the parallel part's different from that. So here's, here's what we're going to say. We're going to say the enhancement E doesn't affect a portion S. So a portion S, like a fraction. So S is a fraction. These are all fractional parts, S of a task. Okay, again, this is, this is larger than just computer science and computer engineering. But it does accelerate the remaining part, which is 1 minus s. That's why s is a fraction. s is a percentage. 1 minus s is a percentage. So 1 minus s is the parallel, paralyzable part, and or whatever, enhancementable, <laughs> enhancement, uh, improvementable part. That's the 1 minus s percentage, a fraction. And s is the fraction that doesn't get changed. And it's going to accelerate by a factor of p. p is bigger than 1. Okay, that's the hope here. So now, let's take a look at what that looks like then. So here is this, you notice that S doesn't change. So this S here, here's my S, that doesn't change, okay? But the one minus S part is smaller by a factor of P, okay? So what we get is the execution time with E is the execution time without E, this is kind of times S. So this, since S didn't change, since this S is still here, that didn't change. So that S, this is, I, this has kind of been distributed. If you multiply this out, let's distribute this. Let's distribute this into this sum. You get execution time without E times S, which is that part didn't change. See, that part didn't change. And then it was the, the old execution time. The parallelizable part is this fraction. It's the old time. It's whatever this time was, which is the execution time of there, times the smaller fraction, which is one minus S, over P. The, therefore, the speed up with E is simply that fraction. One divided by, because that's kind of the, the, novel, the, 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 the normal time, we, we normalize that. One divided by S plus one over S over P. That's the fundamental equation that drives Amdahl's law. So now, let's pull that out. The same, same equation, just wrote it a little bit differently. And you get the speed up time is one over S is the fraction non-sped up. 1 minus S over P is the fraction that is sped up. And in the perfect world, as the speed up factor goes to infinity, if I have a million cores, a trillion cores, a trillion helpers working on this, that term goes to zero. And you're left with 1 over S. And that's it. So the speed up can be no bigger, and in fact in the perfect world is equal to 1 over S. 
That's it. Where S, remember, S is the fraction that's the serial part. All right, let's do this together. For example, the execution time of four-fifths of a program can be accelerated by a factor of 16. That's pretty good. 80% of, of the code is paralyzable, think about that, can be accelerated by a factor of 16. That's awesome. What's the overall speed up? Am I at 16? Am I 15? I can't be bigger than 16. Am I 15? What's the kind of hit? What's the hit I took in that I didn't speed up the whole program? So let's work it out. Well, it's one over, what's the fraction that is serial? Well, that's 20% or 0.2. What's the fraction that's parallel? 0.8. Well, that 0.8 is gonna be 16 times faster. So that's now 0.05. So 0.2 plus 0.05 is 0.25. One over 0.25 is four. You put all this money into a 16 time improvement, but at the end of the day, you only had a four times improvement? Heartbreaking. That's the reason we call it Amdahl's Heartbreaking Law. So as we look at this, here again, here's a piece of code. Here's, again, S is S and P, S and one minus S, or the parallel part. Well, yeah, the parallel part is all, are always fractions, okay? So here I look at this original time. I have a piece of code that's mostly parallel. We're doing pretty well. And every time I add more cores to this, this is the number of cores I'm gonna have here. Every time I add more cores, I'm gonna shrink this parallel part by that factor. So now this yellow guy is half as high, and this yellow guy is a third as high, and this is a quarter as high. I try to do the graphic that way, but that's the idea. So as I look into the number of processors, what I see is, depending on the parallel portion, I have different curves for how, you know, in the perfect world, how much speed up I can get. So if the parallel portion is only 50% of the code, well then the serial part is a half, and therefore I only have two times speed up. So I could have an infinite number of processors and only have double speed up. That's amazing, infinite number of cores. Well, how about 75%? If 75% is parallel, then a quarter, think about that, then a quarter is serial, that means only a four times speed up. The next curve says, how about 90% parallel? Well, that means a 10th and therefore 10x speed up. How about 95%? Well, that's only, that's only uh, one, one 20th uh, is serial, therefore it's only 20 times. So 20 times is pretty good, but you have to almost get to 95% parallel before you can even get 20 times speed up. Much less, I mean, look at the number of cores. We got 65,000, 64K helpers. Yeah, it was only a factor of 20 faster and that is Amdahl's heartbreaking law. So moral of the story is do all the work you can to have very little serial code, a very little setup code, go parallel for the whole thing if you can, and then very little kind of gather and, and join at the end to be able to re release your results. That's the idea. If you want to really maximize it, that it's kind of like the overhead. It's almost like the overhead you paid. I got a business and I have to pay the rent. That's the overhead. All the profit I make, the overhead factors in. So whatever you do, try to reduce the overhead, the serial overhead of your code so that you're almost all in a parallel stage. Try to get to the embarrassingly parallel problem where very little setup, and initial, maybe like example, initialize all the, and all the sums, you remember how we were adding to pi together? Initialize them all to zero, that wasn't done in parallel, but although maybe it could be, but that was done in serially, and then compute all the pi's, that's the, the big chunk of the work, and then some small fraction to gather together and sum it together at the end, all right? All right, Amdahl's heartbreaking law. Sorry, sorry to be the one to bear the bearer of bad, bad news, but you gotta know about it, you gotta learn about it, all right? And that's, by the way, in the perfect case with an infinite number of processes. Imagine the other elements of it. Well, one was slower than the other, and this one failed. And we'll talk about all that when we get to the, the topic of, uh, get to the topic of cloud computing and how we have to deal with those failures. We'll do that later, all right? See you at the next video.